Another topic that's really of interest to us in the consortium is uh, tough to decarbonize transportation solutions. Um, and so for us, that includes long haul trucking, maritime shipping, and aviation. Um, and the thing that all of those have in common is that they are difficult to electrify. Uh, so unlike our passenger vehicles where we already see a lot of electric vehicles and we kind of, that's a matter of just bringing down some of the costs, increasing charging infrastructure, like we, we know what the path is. Um, but when it comes to these much larger vehicles, uh, making it uh, efficient and effective is a much bigger challenge. And as a consequence, there are different technical solutions that are being explored in addition to electrification. Um, so in the long haul trucking space, uh, in addition to electrification, hydrogen is a solution that's being explored. Um, and so with many of our member companies who rely on transportation as part of their value chains and hence are looking to decarbonize it, um, they <clears throat> know that uh, they need to decarbonize the long haul trucking, but there's uncertainty on whether it will be electrification or hydrogen. And so there are questions around the technology issues, but there also are a lot of questions around the kind of infrastructure that we're going to need to build out to uh, be able to refuel or, um, or to charge those, those vehicles. Uh, and so this is an interesting problem because it involves those technological issues, but also infrastructure investment, uh, who should be responsible for that. And so we, we get into a lot of chicken or egg uh, type discussions, right? Like they'd be more likely to have hydrogen vehicles if we knew that there was hydrogen refueling infrastructure that's available. And so um, that's where we really like bringing in many different partners to discuss that uh, together. Um, so the situation with long haul trucking is similar to vehicles in that um, we do need charging infrastructure. The difference is that we need different type of infrastructure than what's used for vehicles. Um, as you can imagine, we need, need much higher uh, current and voltage levels for trucking. Um, and then we also need to make sure that they are included in um, the routes that are most highly used by trucking. Um, and for example, we have a, uh, one of our member companies uh, is a producer of warehouses. And so currently trucks just pull into a warehouse, unload and then leave. Well, we're thinking about warehouses of the future. What if those vehicles could be charging while they are there, right? So we're having to rethink kind of mobility and supply chains associated with uh, those kinds of vehicles because the charging needs are different than they are for vehicles. So when it comes to aviation, it's particularly difficult um, to decarbonize that because um, uh, the electrification involves batteries which are heavy and when it comes to aviation, weight matters uh, a lot. Um, and so there are some really innovative solutions for small aircraft that are already being used um, and developed uh, that involve electrified and even autonomous uh, vehicles. But when it comes to the, the large passenger planes that we're used to seeing, um, that electrification is many decades away. Um, and we have similar challenges uh, with, 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 with hydrogen where we would need to really drastically change the design associated with those, uh, with, with those airplanes. <clears throat> so the most promising solution in the short term um, is the use of what we call sustainable aviation fuel. Um, which we call a drop-in solution because we don't really have to change the, the engines or the, the, the airplanes in which it's used. Um, and so these sustainable aviation fuels come from uh, biologically based uh, sources. Sometimes it can be wastes, uh, sometimes it can be crops that are grown for this this purpose. Um, and so that's a great solution and indeed there are planes that are flying on it right now. The, the challenge is that it's a tiny fraction of the overall fuel that's used and a big reason for that right now is because of cost. Um, and so some of the work that we're doing is looking at uh, in the long term what is the availability of the resources that we would need to supply sustainable aviation fuel at a much higher level. 
Um, and this raises some interesting questions because we, we do have some wastes that, that can be used to create this fuel. Um, but at some point, we would likely have to be growing crops specifically um, for this. Uh, and so <clears throat> that could be a good use. We just have to look at um, uh, compared to what, you, you know, like is that competing with food or can we grow these crops separately? Um, and then what are other demands for these bio-based materials? In other work that we're doing in the consortium, we're looking at trying to improve circularity of materials and there's also a demand for bio-based plastics that could biodegrade and so they could end up coming from similar sources and so that's a big question that we're exploring with our member companies is what is the availability of these resources to meet what's expected to be increasing demand for sustainable aviation fuel.